Hello. So in the previous episode, we went through how we can use Rollify, that is a really powerful and versatile solution for adding user roles. And what is the point of just adding user roles if they don't restrict any kinds of accesses inside your application? So then there is this concept of authorization, allowing users with different roles to have access to different resources inside your application. And you can do authorization either manually inside your controllers, or you can use an existing solution like Pundit or can, can, can. Now, first of all, let's think how we can manually, without using any kind of gem, add some kind of authorization based on roles inside your application. So here I've got a running application that uses Rollify and the current user that is logged in has a role of new user. And we have a few pages like users and posts. And let's restrict users that don't have an admin role from seeing users index. Well, we can do this inside the users controller. We can uh, take this index action and say that if uh, uh, current user dot has role admin, then we are going to display the users. Otherwise, we are going to redirect to the root path uh, with an alert that you are not authorized. Alert not authorized. Let's see if it works. I'm going to go to users once again, and you see I am not authorized to view the users page because uh, I don't have an admin role. But if here I say if current user has role admin or current user has role uh, uh, new user. Yeah, we can actually use has any role. This is a bonded met oh, a Rollify method, has any role. So if a user has a role, either admin or new user, then he can uh, see the users page. Let's try once again, I'm going to users and I can see the users. So one option is for you to write this kind of uh, actions for each of your controller actions where you want to have some kind of authorization. But another and kind of more correct approach would be to use a gem that already handles and that uh, kind of uh, creates a separate place where you keep all your authorization logic. So uh, again, we have Pundit and we have can, can, can two really popular gems that do the same stuff slightly differently. And I usually prefer using Pondit. So in this episode, we're going to learn how we can use the gem Pondit for authorizing users to have different access rights based on their roles. Now, first of all, let's see how we can install Pondit. I'm going to take the gem Pondit and add it to our gem file. So here's the gem file. You see we already have installed Trollify. And now we're going to run Bundle. Now, generally, you can use Pundit uh, independently of from Rollify. You can use it with uh, any way you set user roles. So if you set user roles without uh, Rollify, that's OK. Uh, you can use it without Rollify. So OK, we've added the gem to our gem file, and we've run bundle. What is next? We need to include Pundit inside our application controller. Let's go to the application controller and include Pundit. OK, what's next? It says we can run a generator uh, to install on that. Let's see what it gives us. So here you see it created a new folder named policies. Inside app, we have this new folder named policies and we have this application policy. So all the kind of uh, examples of how we can use it. Basically, you see, we can uh, have different action names and uh, set access rights for these action names. Anyway, we'll come back to this now. So we've created this application policy, but now we're going to create a user policy. So we're going to handle the policies for action for different actions, for accessing different actions inside our users controller. So we're going to run the command like rails generate pundit and something else. Let's see, rails generate pundit policy user. So we're going to generate a pundit policy named user. And you see it created the a new file, user policy. And here we're going to have the user actions. So first we'll have the index action. I'll say def index with a question mark and say who can access the index page. I will say uh, at user. So this would be the current user uh, has role 
admin or let's say has role uh, which role do we have new user well let's start with just admin so if uh, a user has the role admin if the current user has the role admin it will be set to true but to uh, not work yet now let's first uh, hide all this logic we're not going to use it anymore because we will use pond it instead okay so here we have users and we have this user policy for index so let's see if it works i'll start the server and try to go to users and you see it doesn't work yet because we need to add the an authorization inside our controller we would say authorize uh, at users something like this let's see if it works i will refresh and we get not allowed to index okay so we got this pundit not authorized error but it doesn't look nice uh, why it doesn't look look nice because we need to add this pundit not authorized error somewhere inside our application so we're uh, going to add it inside our application controller here you see this rescue and denied authorization in Rails. And we're going to add this code inside our application controller. It's also important. So here we will rescue from this error, from pundit, pundit not authorized error with this uh, private action. And it will say that you're not authorized to perform this action and redirect to the previous page or to the root path. Let's see if it works. I will refresh once again. And you see, I tried to go to users and it says you're not authorized to perform this action. So it kind of works. And now let's uh, allow this user to have access to the user's page. Let's say in user's policy, user has any role, admin or new user. Now let's try to go to users and you see we can access the user's page. So it works. Now let's also create a policy that only admin users can edit a user's roles. So we would create an action named uh, def edit and an action named def uh, update. Don't forget the question marks. And here again, we will say if uh, the user has role admin. And here, yeah, I'll actually do it like this. For update, I will say if the user has role uh, admin. And for edit, I will say if we can update. So let's see if it works. I'll try to go to one of the pages and I still can go to the page. Why can I go to the page? Because I did not add this uh, authorize method inside the controller. So I will need to add authorize at user. Now I need to add this after I find the user. And here I will also add authorize user. So now I will try once again, I'll go to edit roles. And you see, I get this, uh, you're not authorized to perform this action error. So our authorization works. Okay, now let's uh, log in as an admin. Let's go to see what admin users we have. He has this admin user. I'll just log in as him. And let's see, I'm going to go to users, edit uh, some kind of users roles. And yeah, you see we have, uh, this user has a lot, a lot of roles to choose from. Why is it so? Because we list all the roles available inside our application in our edit form. Let's go to uh, users, edit, and here we list all, all the roles. And we don't want to list all the roles. We don't uh, want to list roles that are scoped to a specific post. We want to see only the global roles. So how can we find the global roles? Let's have a look. We'll go to db schema and we see we have a list of roles a ro role has a name and if a role is scoped to a post it will have the resource type name post and a resource id so let's find the roles that are global the ones that don't have a resource type so i will say role dot fair resource type equals nil let's try again and now we see only the global roles so looks much better Let's add another role to this uh, user. Actually, what user am I editing? Let's at least display his uh, email or something. Let's say equals at user.email. 
Okay, I'll refresh. Yeah, looks a bit better. So I will add uh, a few rows to him. And you see it worked. So looks fine. And now we've got a few different authorizations for index, for edit, and for update. So for all the actions that we have inside our user's controller. Looks good. And now let's also actually add a few authorizations for our posts uh, controller. Let's have a look at our posts controller. Go into controllers, posts. And here we have many more actions. So again, I will create a new uh, bonded policy for post. Here it is. And now we'll add a few actions. So we'll have who can see index, def index. And actually, any user will be able to see index. So we can just say true or whatever. Let's see if it works. I'll say authorize at posts and see if it works. Let's run Rails server and try to navigate to posts. Okay, yeah, I made a typo in typing the word authorize. Okay, so it works, I can see the posts and what happens if I type false? So if I say false, then nobody inside the application will have access to this view. So kind of a fun experiment. Okay, now let's uh, add, the, let's actually see what these scopes are. You see, we have this uh, resolve scope.all. So, what does the scope uh, stand for? Well, for example, what if we have a list of posts? Uh, some posts uh, are premium or some are not. Or let's not just add an additional field. Let's say uh, users that have the admin role can see all the posts, and users that don't have an admin role can see. Uh, posts that don't have content, no, that have content. So posts without content will be visible only to admin users. Now, to make this experiment, we're going to add some uh, scope here. And we're going to go to the documentation of Pundit and find policy scope. So uh, here we have this policy scope thing. Let's uh, find the documentation for it. Okay, well, anyway, basically, we can say that a user that has a role admin uh, at user dot has role admin can see all the posts. Uh, if user has role admin, he'll see all the posts. Else, uh, we'll say scope dot where content is, uh, well, is blank. And we'll say end. And inside our post controller, we will add this policy scope. I will say policy scope for post. And let's see if it changes anything. So it didn't change anything for us because we are an admin, but let's say it would be not admin, it would be admin Z or admin two, whatever. So if a user has the role admin tool, he will see all. Otherwise, a user will see only posts without content. Let's see. And it works. So we have added this policy scope. And uh, we don't have the role that allows us to see all the posts. We see only posts without content. So this is what a policy scope is. And this is what the scope.all does. So looks fine. And uh, again, the same as we did with uh, our users controller. We've added authorized users, authorized user. We can do the same for all the post actions. And just one more interesting thing. So let's say we don't have a role admin. Let's take the role admin away from us. So submit. Okay, now I try to edit somebody's roles and I don't have access to do this. But let's say that the button to edit roles will be invisible to users that don't have access to this uh, action. So we would go to our views. Let's go to our users index and we would add some kind of uh, validation to see this button. Let's first uh, write something like 
to check if a user has uh, access to some kind of uh, a controller action, let's say equals uh, current user. No, no, it, it will be something like uh, equals policy uh, user dot edit. And it should check something like if the current user has access to user policy edit action. Let's see if it will be true or false. Now I will add some kind of visibility for this. Let's say we'll have a bold text, a uh, current user can edit a user and it will bring us true or false. Let's see. So current user can edit a user, it says false. And let's make the same current user can see users. And we would say policy user dot index. And as we can see all users, it should give us uh, true. So here you see it gives us true and user can edit the user false. So if we can say uh, link to edit roles, if policy user dot to edit or update. Let's see. And now we don't have uh, the possibility to see the link to edit the users. So kind of makes sense. And this is basically it for using the Jam Pundit. You see, it's quite easy. So you just go to your application controller, include Pundit and this rescue from Pundit not authorized error. Then you create this folder with policies and create the uh, uh, separate logics for accessing uh, different actions inside your user's controller or post controller. And don't forget to authorize users or authorize user and so on. And that's basically it. So thanks for being with me and uh, enjoy restricting users from accessing different parts of your application. Bye-bye.